Hi, I'm Sandy and welcome to the Garden Guru's Garden Revolution. We've got a great show for you today. Coming right up, Rain is going to teach us how to make a bouquet out of succulents. A bouquet of flowers, a well-known romantic statement. But let's take it a little bit further. Let's do a succulent bouquet. Look at this adorable bunch of succulents here, paired with preserved flowers that you can get from any of your nearby nurseries. Margaret heads down to River Valley High School where students learn about urban farming and experience the fundamentals of the farming cycle. The teacher shared a story with us. There's one student who hated eating vegetables, but he was so committed to growing Japanese kailan as part of the school's community project. And I will share with you how much sunlight does your plant really need. If a sun-loving plant does not get quite enough direct sun, don't worry, it's not going to die on you. It will just stretch and elongate because it's trying to reach out for more light. Hello, hello. If you've been watching the Garden Revolution faithfully, you know I'm all about helping you find plants that are easy to care for. And today, we have a special friend from Africa. This gorgeous plant has many names. Some call it a snake plant because of its leaf resembling the body of a snake. Notice how sharp it is. And because of this, some people also call it mother-in-law's tongue. If you know, you know. The snake plant is also botanically known as Dracaena trifasciata. In Latin, Dracaena means female dragon and trifasciata tree bundles. And today, I have here with me two common specimens that you can find in Singapore. So this here is the old generation. My grandma used to plant this a lot back in Malaysia. It's very popular with the older folks. As you can see, the leaves are tapered and it's much broader. Whereas in recent times, this year, the variety called Laurenti is very popular because it adds a little bit more colour. It's slimmer, just like me. The snake plant is a very versatile plant. It does best in direct and indirect bright light situations. However, if you do not have such situations at home, you have nothing to worry. It will do well in low light conditions too. Just like our other friend, the ZZ plant, the snake plant here is also a drought tolerant species. Water it when the media is completely dry and ensure that the water flows through to the bottom of the pot. Overwatering will cause root rot and that will be the death of it. Apply a bit of slow release fertilizer to give that little boost to your snake plant. With a plant like this, the media has to be well draining and provide sufficient aeration. It is also a fast grower. When my grandmother had this in her old terracotta pot, the plant grew so fast that it broke the pot. So the other thing you need to remember is always check that the roots are not compacted. To do that, stick your little finger into the soil and if it's hard, you can feel the roots inside there. It could be an indication that it is time to repot your plant. There's one thing you need to know about the snake plant and that is during the night, while other plants are releasing carbon dioxide, the snake plant actually absorbs it through its leaves. This means your room is actually kept fresher during the night. So grab yourself a little snake plant and bring it home, she won't bite. There is no other place on the planet as committed as Singapore to green cities and green architecture. Now this is the garden in a hotel and it's absolutely spectacular. This is the Park Royal Collection Marina Bay and they were the first to position themselves as the garden in a hotel. And what a garden, what a hotel home to over 2,400 plants, including 60 different varieties of flora, which have all been selected after trials to ensure that they were resilient and suitable to indoor conditions. Walking into the hotel, you immediately feel like you're entering a forest. This natural environment evokes a sense of peace and tranquility, an escape from the hustle bustle of this very busy city. The transformation here has been quite remarkable and the results are quite incredible. Some of them intangible, things like this sense of just feeling better when you get here. And it's because of all the trees. Well, of course, they're invigorating the atmosphere, putting more oxygen in, leaving you feeling stimulated and just alive. Most importantly, 
the things that can be calculated are really significant. For example, all of this has taken the equivalent of 51,300 tonnes of carbon not being released into the atmosphere. And that's the equivalent of 8.7 million trees not being cut down. That's saving a whole forest. When you explore this hotel, its sustainable positioning just gets more and more credible. For instance, the roof is home to 210 solar panels. They generate 350 kilowatts of electricity daily. And to put that into perspective, it's equivalent to the power consumption of 540 Singapore homes a day. Now, the other thing that the team here, well, I'm not sure they've been able to completely calculate just as of yet, is the true savings when it comes to energy consumption. You see, the use of plants in this kind of environment moderates the temperatures massively, which means you use less air conditioning, which can save tens of thousands of dollars. Speaking of saving energy, the swimming pool comes alive with 1,380 glowing fibre optic lights at dusk. This only consumes about 13,000 kilowatt hours of energy per year. Compared to the standard swimming pool lights, it's a stunning effect that'll save energy and money. There's even a farm on the roof producing produce for the restaurants here, reducing carbon food miles, being fed with compost from the kitchen waste, which is then converted into nutritious soil and delivering the freshest produce to the chefs right next door. And for me, the thing I love the most about this hotel is the selection of plants they've used. It makes the world of difference when they're lush, exotic and tropical, just like this. You really feel like you're in the jungle. It's so easy to relax and feel like you're at home. Coming up next. Now this is a design and engineering feat on a scale that is hard to fathom. Some of the statistics are absolutely amazing. One of the most incredible ones being the footprint that the hotel sits on is 15,000 square metres. But the gardens, because they're going up walls and they cover everything, cover over 17,000 square metres. To create a beautiful garden, you don't need a lot of space. In this beautiful HDB corridor, what you can do is you take a few potted plants and you put them along the side, and this will actually beautify the corridor. Please take note there's a legal requirement of 1.2 metres clearance space for the corridor. This is to allow emergency medical staff to go through, so it's best to put all your plants by the side. Recommended types of plants to grow are your bamboo plant and your money plant. For watering techniques, we can place a plastic bag at the bottom of the pot. This is to prevent slippery floors. And any excess water that is collected in the bag, you can actually use it to water your other plants. For fertilizer, I recommend using an odorless fertilizer. This is because the smell might be unpleasant to your neighbours. Recommended fertiliser to use is a slow release or controlled fertiliser because every time you water, nutrients are slowly released into the soil. Growing plants is good for your physical and mental health. It beautifies your corridor and it gives you shade. Give it a try. You can start with plants like ZZ, Ivy and Nim. A bouquet of flowers, a well-known romantic statement. But let's take it a little bit further. Let's do a succulent bouquet. Look at this adorable bunch of succulents here, paired with preserved flowers that you can get from any of your nearby nurseries. Unlike cut flowers that will wither away after a week or two, succulents are tough desert plants that can go for months without soil. And the echeveria, which are rosette shaped, make great substitutes for flowers. Firstly, you're going to need a mix of succulents and then a mix of preserved flowers. And lastly, a set of floral wires, twines and scissors. Firstly, you're going to want to prepare all your succulents first. So what you need to do now is to remove all the soil from the plant, exposing the stem and roots like this, okay? Start piercing through the stem with a floral wire like this. You want to aim for the spot nearest to the lowest leaf. 
All right, somewhere here, as close as possible, and then just gently step your floral wire through the succulent. Once you pierce through, it should be hanging right in the middle. I want you to then fold the floral wire together, like this. Aligning the wire with the stem, all right? Once you get this, you're gonna take out your twine, okay? Aligning right at the base, and then you're gonna start treading around. So we just wanna twine the stem of the succulent to merge together with the strong metal wire that is keeping the succulent upright, creating sort of a floral stalk like this. So I like to just twist and twist and twist, slightly in the halfway region. Take a scissor, you snip away the excess, you do one last big loop around, and then you slot the twine through the succulent, okay? making a nice little knot at the base so that they do not unravel by themselves. And there you go, a little succulent stalk. And Ooh. here we have three. So you put three together, okay? And what we want to do now is to tie them together so that they don't run all over the place. And then um, you have a bundle of three succulent stalks right here. And then you can come here and pick some of your preserved flowers. Um, just a nice variety of them. I like to choose some tall ones, some bushier ones like the baby breath. So once you've gathered all your preserved flowers, we're gonna hand arrange them with our succulents. Adding in more and more preserved flowers to the side and around the back of the plant. So when making a bouquet, always make sure that you have some tall pieces and then some shorter pieces and also bushy ones like this to fill the gaps. So once again, we're going to use twine to secure the entire bouquet together. All right, around. Make sure you get a nice row of twine around the middle part of the bouquet to secure all your succulent stalks and your preserved flowers together. Once done, you want to use your scissor, trim off the extra sticks at the back. And then you have your bouquet like this, all right? And to take it a step further, let's bring out the floral wraps. Here is the complete bouquet finished with ribbons and floral wraps. So get creative with your succulent bouquet today. When it comes to green buildings in Singapore's business district, the Park Royal Collection Pickering is probably the greenest. Opened in 2013, this incredible hotel is affectionately known as the Hotel in a Garden. It's quite literally dripping with plants, and this green dressing isn't superficial in any way. The green theme moves seamlessly from outdoors inside the beautifully thought out hotel. Now this is a design and engineering feat on a scale that is hard to fathom. Some of the statistics are absolutely amazing. One of the most incredible ones being the footprint that the hotel sits on is 15,000 square metres. But the gardens, because they're going up walls and they cover everything, cover over 17,000 square metres. And the good they do is quite amazing. They do everything from taking carbon out of the atmosphere, injecting the atmosphere in with fresh air, to moderating the temperatures, reducing the energy cost for the building. They truly are remarkable. Now, there are over 50 species that have been chosen for the gardens here, and they've been chosen for a very specific reason. You see, they're incredibly hardy, so ideal for this environment. They're not just local natives. They've also been selected from all over the world. This one here is a classic example. This is the Australian what's called foxtail palm. Now, it comes from far north Queensland, and it was once rare and endangered, but today it's a highly sought-after feature plant and a great addition up here in this environment. The greenery enshrouds the 16-storey building, with every room opening to a view of the gardens and the city. With so many plants, you'd be thinking it uses huge amounts of water, but the design features rainwater collection. And this strategy saves over 6 million litres of water a year. And that same water is used extensively in waterfalls, some two storeys high, making a hot day seem very comfortable for guests wanting to hang out at the stunning pool with a view. The tactile, undulating nature of the design of this building was inspired by the rice fields of Bali. And its environmental credentials are really quite incredible. This was Singapore's 
first zero energy sky garden because it's powered by solar panels on the roof. There's even sensors located throughout the garden. They detect rain, they detect light, even motion. And this means that you only use as much energy as you should. And you're probably asking that question. What about all the plants? They need water. Well, stormwater is captured on the roof and fed back down through the gardens to sustain them. And this saves millions and millions of litres every year. This is considered one of the world's top 50 most influential buildings. Look how beautiful it is. All this greenery does a lot of very good things. Most important, it takes carbon out of the atmosphere and injects oxygen into the atmosphere that all the guests and visitors are breathing. And it leaves you feeling fresh and invigorated. Take into account all the sustainable things going on here, capturing energy from the sun, at the same time recycling stormwater and using it in places like this and to keep the gardens looking fantastic. This really is the future. Coming up next. Today we are at River Valley High School. The students are involved in the entire planting cycle, which includes sowing seeds, transplanting, stem cutting propagation, and the care and maintenance. Today we are at River Valley High School. They started their urban farming last year. The objective is to allow students to understand where our food comes from, to learn and practice the fundamentals of the full planting cycle. Students learn about specific plants and are very hands-on in growing, trimming, watering and the harvesting process. We have a few variety of vegetables and herbs that are grown here, such as Brazilian spinach, lavender and marigold, which is an edible flower. The students are involved in the entire planting cycle, which includes sowing seeds, transplanting, stem cutting propagation and the care and maintenance. Bi-weekly, they will check on the pH reading to collect the data to support their horticultural practices. Part of the harvest will be donated to the neighbouring community fridge to share among the residents. The farming harvest in River Valley High School is for the community in the Boon Lay area. The teacher shared a story with us. There's one student who hated eating vegetables but he was so committed to growing Japanese kailan as part of the school's community project. In the first harvest, the teacher fried a few portions of the vegetables for the students to try. And to his surprise, the student who hated vegetables actually enjoyed it. The teacher told the student that it was because of the organic farming methods and the freshness of the vegetables. And this reminds us that urban farming can change our lifestyle. The school's plan is to start planting production in the third quarter this year to align with the nation's 2030 goal of self-sustainability. And the school also aims to supply 30% of the school canteen's needs. How much sunlight does your plant need? We often tell people that this plant is sun-loving and the other plant is shade-loving. But not everyone understands exactly what that means. And I don't blame them. Today, I'll share with you the different light requirements of plants. When we say that this plant is sun-loving or it needs full sunlight, it actually means that this plant should be grown in the rays of the direct sun for at least six hours or more. They also require a slightly more retentive potting mix because there's quicker evaporation in the sun and the plant also loses moisture real quickly and it will drink a lot more and faster. This is how you tell if this spot here gets full sun or direct sunlight. As you can see, the shadow that the leaf casts is very distinct. If a sun-loving plant does not get quite enough direct sun, don't worry, it's not going to die on you. It will just stretch and elongate 
because it's trying to reach out for more light. I have an example of an elongated and somewhat etiolated plant here. It's a succulent. And here is one that has been given enough sunlight. You can see a stark difference between the both of them and also colour differences. Next, shade-loving plants. Before me are some examples of shade-loving plants. We have Calatia, we have prayer plant, we have peacock fern, Aglaonema. There is one big misconception that shade-loving plants like to grow in a dark place. They actually like indirect sunlight, which means no direct rays of the sun shining on them, but the place has to be bright. Most of the time, shade-loving plants can tolerate a little direct sun. And the best is morning sun, as we always say. A plant or a shade-loving plant can slowly be acclimatised to a little bit of direct morning sun. This is a fiddle leaf fig or a ficus lirata. It's a very popular plant among Singaporeans. And when they buy it, they're often told that this is a shade-loving house plant. But that is not entirely true. A fig will grow into a tree and it is actually sun-loving. Now, more often than not, people will put this in the shade and periodically bring it out into full sun. And that could cause sunburn. The best way to introduce a plant that has been kept in the shade for too long is to slowly bring it back into the direct sun. Now, the advice that we can give you is to not grow a sun-loving plant in the shade. Leave it where there's ample sunlight for it to grow well. The best advice I can give to you is to place the plants where they can grow well, where they receive the right amount of light. When you have visitors coming over, you can always stay. But remember to move your plants back to their growing areas in a day or two. That's all the time we have for our show. We hope you have enjoyed the hints, tips and garden trivia. You too can start your very own garden revolution. Check out our social media pages and website for more information. Till next time.